was not familiar with the Decameron. And um, I, for, for myself, when I'm taking on any project, I go into deep research. I read as much as I could, as quickly as I could, and also tried to, tried to draw the, tried to get at the core of what I was seeing and this idea of wrestling with fortune. It was a recurring theme throughout. There's generally space for a composer librettist team. I had presented to you very, very close to the beginning this idea that maybe whatever story it was, could we tell it through a graphic novel, with a graphic novel lens? And what if our composer librettist team were in fact a composer librettist and illustrator team? And that's when the conversation brought in to bring in Chris. I've been fortunate enough to work with my very talented baby sister <laughs> on lots of projects for her initiatives in New York City. They were smaller projects, lovely you know, posters for events. The chance to do this with her, oh my God, it was a dream. <laughs> I knew that Chris was involved before the libretto was written, before we had a stitch of music, before we had a story. <laughs> <laughs> and so this has been just an intensely deep collaboration um, I, uh, that has been such a gift. How did you get from Boccaccio to sourdough? <laughs> Good question, I think. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> I felt like wrestling the for with fortune as I was doing my research in this idea of wrestling with fortune. Which is which is a line in the in the actual sourdough, right? Because that's that was the that was this nuclear reactor. And are we in our own sequester, wrestling with fortune, like those ten people in the Decameron? But also, what the, what what are the different ways that, that that means something, you know? And right now, there are so many ways that people's lives have been reshaped by COVID and by, by all of the events of 2020 and that those leading up to it. There was no speaking to all of it. There was no way. And I, and I frankly, I have, I, I feel that in this story, cause I don't like to speak globally cause maybe there's a, there's a, maybe sometime I might change my mind and have a totally different take on this, but I'm thinking out loud. And I, and I think that speaking in an intimate way, locally, right? In an everyday way made sense to me. And the character, but I also liked the idea of making them ordinary superheroes, right? These ordin, there's, there's, this is, to me, that's ludicrous and also beautiful and real. I mean, the, the heroic things that I see in my life are, did you see when that person said that negative thing, that other person said that incredibly positive thing? That's a hero moment. That's true heroism to me, is when somebody finds grace in a moment of great challenge and generosity under duress they are generous like those are the moments that are powerful and beautiful and i was thinking about how how can how can that be the focus how can that be the thrust of this and so these are three ordinary characters that are connected and how i had read an, er, an article earlier on uh in the spring about someone in someone in brooklyn who i think was giving out bread and had also started a starter and was giving starter away. <laughs> and I had, and it resonated with me because our, I, I am the acting chair of the composition program at the Hart School. And when we shut down, I mean, we didn't shut down when we went remote in the spring, um, I came home and, it, and we were all disoriented and none of us knew if we were going back, but we all had a sense that this is, very likely to, to last. And I started a starter. <laughs> so when I read that article about that person in, in Brooklyn, I was like, oh, that makes sense.
like lots of people were starting starters and so this idea of sourdough rise up it's the conflation of the of like this huge thing and this little starter you know and and that's sort of the that was the nuclear reactor all of those things together the And just to be authentic about this, yeah. I actually got in my car and drove all the way across New York State to get a loaf of sourdough bread for my sister, <laughs> just to do my part. And was that research? Did that predate the, the project or was it well, a part of the project? <laughs> you know, I, I'm avowed gluten-free and I, I still went and got my sourdough and ate every crumb of it. <laughs> I think that makes the trip tax deductible too. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I loved so much about the libretto was how richly visual it was. Like as soon as I read this thing, we talked about the characters. They, I saw them in my head, and I ended up creating them in a style that I don't typically draw in. It's not my native style. The one that you'll see on my on my website in my professional work. It's not really like what I just did here, but this just hit me on such a gut level. And there was the requirement for so many images that I had to simplify it. But we talked at length about the characters and what they needed to represent and how they needed to feel. And um, it, it came to me astonishingly quickly. I, I, I don't even think I did a second version. I, I did the first, the first background that I thought of and I did a character sketch and we both really responded to it. And then the rest of it just started falling together. And then we, we really collaborated on a lot of the scenes. A lot of the more charming scenes came from Little Seamus. Jill's <laughs> delightful son, who was so engaged in this, and he said, what about this? And anything he says, I jump on, So because it's Seamus. <laughs> but it was a, just a gloriously collaborative effort. I, I loved every second of this. There was just a trust and a, and a, a beautiful shorthand mm. that came the way that it's sort of cheating to play charades with your best friend, you know? <laughs> That's great. Yep. You wrote the libretto very quickly, as I recall. It kind of like came in a day or, or whatever. So I guess you were- It was actually overnight. It was, what happened was I, I had, I had, um, was it Shostakovich that said, think, think slow, write fast. And, and that's, that, that resonates with me because that's often the, the research sometimes for a project takes longer than writing the project for me. That's, that's often the way. And at first, you know, when one is discovering one's own process, you wonder sometimes, huh, is that like, I don't know. It's not, it's not, is that normal, but wow, I wonder if that's going to happen every time. And what does that mean? What are the implications? But now I just know that that's how it is. And it's because I'm writing as I'm researching. I'm just not necessarily notating it. You know, and it's, and I don't share, I, I don't share sketches because I, I've, I've got it here. And then I like downloads into execution, right? And that happens all very quickly. And, um, and so I had been thinking, thinking, and, and then I thought, ah, you know, I just don't want to lose this one idea. And so I, I opened my notes on my phone, you know, and it was, I was about to, I was literally, I, the light was off and I just didn't want to lose it. And then I said, well, if I write that down, I should get this down and get, and then I was like, well, this is going to take longer than if I just, and so the first draft of the libretto was written on my notes on my phone and it was almost fully executed. I mean, really, and it was just a night's worth of sitting in the dark, you know, <laughs> typing it up. And it wasn't that I wrote it in a day necessarily, it's that I wrote it all down in a night because I had been thinking about these people and what they would say and where they would live and how we would get at this conversation that we're having. When I look back, if I take a project and I dissect it and at the end, if it doesn't feel like I did 80 drawings in a relatively short period of time. It did not feel like work to me. I know that sounds like such a corny cliche, but this was so joyful. And we would talk virtually every day and I'd show Jill and she'd get so excited and Seamus would get so excited, <laughs> which was really meaningful. 
because um, yeah, it's like you're talking about a shared experience through COVID. This this will be one going forward, but it did not feel like 80 drawings. It it was such a joy, and it. it I don't say that very often about a project of this magnitude, <laughs> but it really was a joy. something <laughs>